Hello everyone, you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back from escaping from work to talk about Fake Grand Earth for a bit. <laughs> uh, again, day just slightly late on this one. Today I'm going to be talking about two other of the five-star units that are going to be appearing. Uh, one that is already here, and the other one that will be appearing later today when you see this video. One of them is going to be Himiko, and then the other one is going to be Okita, which you can see right here from the schedule. Is scheduled to be next and today on the 10th and this will also be the last uh, banner day for Himiko as well so let's get right into it starting with Himiko and again I'm sorry if I sound very tired I I've, I've been going through some pretty <laughs> it has not been a fun couple of days that woke up today very hurt but anyway Himiko ruler that's why I have such very low energy. It actually hurts to laugh a little bit. Himiko, ruler. Uh, one quick, two arts, two buster. Four hits on quick, two, three hits on art, three hits on arts, one hits on buster, five hits on extra. Our active skills are shamaness, or shamaness. Shaman? Shaman? Well, they're both called shaman when it's a woman. Shamaness? Shamaness? Shamanist char Charisma B. Increases party's attack for three turns. Grants party eight star crit just. <laughs> Grants party eight critical star gen regeneration buff for three turns. 20% to attack on a cooldown of five. Her second skill is the Kaido A. Increases on buster performance for three turns. Increases on damage against demonic enemies for three turns. And then grants self invincibility for one turn. 30% to buster. 50% to demo uh, when you're fighting demonic um, dudes. And cooldown is six. Her third skill is okay. Tiny cut there. Sorry, something. Someone came home, so I had to completely cut off the recording there for a bit. But now I'll continue on here. Oracle's brilliance. I'm pretty sure this is where I left off on. Or if I didn't, then editing me will fix it. Oracle's brilliance. A charges on MP gauge, increases on critical star absorption of Buster cards for one turn, and then increased critical damage of Buster cards for a single turn. Fifty percent to bust. No, fifty percent to NP. 500% buster absorption and the buster crit damage is 100% on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Territory Creation A, Primitive Body A, which gives her a Poison and Curse debuff immunity. Her third skill is an Anti-Foreigner Attack Damage Aptitude, and her rank B Noble Phantasm is a Sishin Katadori Katadoru Kyuin Kyo. Eternal Mirror that models the Celestial Bodies, rank B Buster. Barrier type, Noble Phantasm type. Increases the party's bus performance for three turns. Overcharges party's MP by two stages for one time, three turns. At MP level one, she gives 30% to Buster, and if you get her all the way to MP level five, it's 50%. And then she increases the party's crit damage for three turns. At charge level one, it's 50%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 100%, and that is Himiko. I, I really like Himiko um, as a character. And in terms of her unit, I think she's very useful. Now, in terms of how useful she is, is going to vary very wildly depending on your specific playstyle. Um, I think she ends up being best be put to be best be put in as a kind of like Buster support that you want to put in there that wants to kind of survive the team, wants to survive with the team. So she's obviously better suited for challenge quests as opposed to something like doing looping grinds or something like that. The reason is, is that while it is very nice that her third skill has a 50% up to her own MP gauge, the fact of the matter still remains that if you want to take full advantage of her buster support and the ability to overcharge and giving party critical damage, you do need to give her at least a 50% starting MP of some kind or 30% depending on a lot of scenarios. So that will end up hampering you when you are trying to grind a lot of the time unless you are specifically giving her a 30% and then giving her mana loading. So it will always depend a lot on about where you're going for. And then if you want to actually put her up for fights, obviously if she's using her MP that means that she won't have the ability to use, either you'll want to go down with the other two buster cards and completely destroy the enemy. Or you're just specifically setting up another unit to do that in her stead. And the reason I say it, it's like that is because that's how I typically used her whenever I wanted to try and three turn something for a, an event. It is possible. It can be a little bit uh, the way I, I want to say bricky. But that's how you describe um, a Yu-Gi-Oh deck when you don't draw the right cards. Or in general any deck of cards. Well because Fago is kind of like that because there's 
cards in the deck. There's 15 of them. And sometimes you don't draw the right Himiko cards, and that first turn is a complete brick because you aren't able to actually kill the thing you need to kill. But that's also assuming that she is the one doing the kills. She's also able to get plenty of... Uh, crit stars thanks to this first skill right here because it gives the party a critical star regeneration buff so that means everyone <laughs> i think it ends up being like what a 21 a 21 um crit stars for the entire team because it gives it to everyone 24 it's 24 that is a crazy first skill so you can see how if you're taking advantage of this specific style of going through um, you can really take a lot of advantage of her, but it really depends on the team. So what is the actual team that a lot of people kind of agree on is the best for Himiko? The answer is Stall. The reason is, is because she's amazing when it comes to Stall because of this ability here, which is the ability to overcharge the party's MP by two stages for one time three turns. And guess who can do that? Guess who would love to have more overcharge? The answer is, of course... Castoria. She is obviously that ability will work good with anyone that wants overcharge, but in terms of stalling, this is amazing with her because if I can find Castoria, hello, please, you're right there. Castoria has this ability here. It's one of the best defensive one. It's the anti purge defense, and this stacks based off of overcharge. So obviously, if you're using Himiko and an MP1 Castoria, you use Himiko's, the way that MP kind of stacks is that if you use one person's MP and then you use the second one, this would be at um, overcharge level one. And then even though this is at MP1, it would get the second overcharge. And then Himiko's effect would trigger first, which is uh, overcharges party's MP by two stages. So that would increase it to one, two. And now you have four, which is now you're at 400% charge. You're giving anti-purge defense stacks to the entire team, which is four. And you're stalling the game for as long as you can. And you're also using her typically with Merlin or someone else who is a very good at stalling. And using this and taking advantage of Himiko's ability to give overcharge along with a pretty uh, stacked defensive lineup. You're able to stall the game and you're able to slowly whittle down the opponent and kind of win that way. Um, that is typically what I see as the best case scenario for a lot of Himiko seems. Because it's the easiest thing to kind of see. Um... And if you're not down for that kind of style of play, which to be fair, even though I love Himiko, Stall is usually not my favorite style of team, which is why I use her in a lot of weird janky teams where it's like, well, if I use Himiko turn one and then hopefully with the other two abilities here, able to <laughs> get some enough crit stars and then kill whatever they're on the first and then kind of go with that. Um, you, what I'm saying here is that if you really love Himiko, you really got to go out of your way to find it because she is a very good support, but she's not a good support in the sense of it's easy to apply her anywhere. You have to be very careful with your team building and go specifically, I want to take advantage of these things and build around it and have a team built for that. And if you don't have that, you just try your user as a generic support. You're going to be a little bit disappointed with what you get. But as long as you can build around her specifically, you can have a lot of fun with Himiko. I love using Himiko. Um, if I wasn't so bogged down by work, I would love to use Himiko <laughs> right now. Are you kidding me? I would love to do nothing more. It's literally an event where she has a damage bonus and I can't use her yet because I've been so busy with work. But anyway, that's Himiko. If you went for her, I really hope you were able to get her. I love Himiko. If I wasn't waiting for more... Um, if I wasn't waiting for future units to summon on, I would 100% summon on her just because I like the idea of going from MP level 2 is a 40% versus 30% to bust her. In MP level 5, it is 50%, but on 3 and 4, it's like 5% and 0.2.5% of the is a, as a bonus. So really, if anything, I would love to have her MP2 just to give the entire team some buster performance up by 40% and have her the ability to slowly charge up the charge as well. Um, to give some more crit damage and things like that. Hopefully I don't feel like I'm being too overly down on Himiko. It'd be a bummer if it feels like it is that way. Because I really do love this unit and I love using them. But at the same time I have to try and give it as much information as I can to people of how I view her as a, as a whole. And being specifically like, hey, if you're seeing her as, oh man, that's a buster support. And you're going, oh, I'll just fit her in with my other buster supports. That's not the way to use them. It's not the proper way of seeing it. And if you use her that way, you're going to think she's bad. You have to use her in a very specific way that caters to what she does. But I guess that's fair for any other unit, as I talked about someone who 
uh, as I saw someone was actually took the time to explain to me a little bit more about Hijikata and stuff. It's just a learning process. Speaking of learning processes, let's talk about the next banner, which should be coming up today, which is going to feature Okita and Okita J. Soji, which is Summer Okita. Um, as I say, with most summer units, them being in a swimsuit is good enough. So I'll just very quickly say about Okita J. Soji, I think eventually... The day is going to come eventually where they're going to buff her to make her not constantly stun herself, and I can't remember if that day is already here. Um, the day is still not here. <laughs> I don't think it is anyway. If they ever remove the ability to not have it so you stun yourself by a 60% chance of stunning yourself, she's going to be a great looper. But as long as you have her, you're always going to have to um, find a way to deal with the fact that she will 60% of the time just stun herself for a single turn. But I think it only lasts the single turn, so it shouldn't be too bad. It only matters if you are doing follow-up stuff. If I remember correctly, because I remember someone saying that to me specifically last time. So if you're just trying to use her as a generic um, AoE unit for quick, it shouldn't be too bad. But don't quote me on that, because I don't know enough of it. I actually do have her. I should <laughs> use her and actually level up. The reason I don't use her is that I have a lot... I don't really have that much use for an AoE quick assassin unit um, most of the time. But it would be nice to have one, actually. You know what? I'm, I'm going to try that next time and use her. But either way, I think deep down, it doesn't matter the reason why you want to keep in a swimsuit. Anything I say about her in terms of quality doesn't really matter. You'll find a way to use her if you care about her. Next, we have regular ass Okita, which is Okita Soji, which is the Saber version. Um, she comes with two quicks, one arts, two buster, five hits on quick, two hits on arts, and th one hit on buster with three hits on extra. Her first skill is the Shukakuchi B+, which is an increased own attack, um, increased own quick performance for one turn, grants self a buff on attack buff for one turn, increases own attack by 20% for one turn when normal attacking activates first, 50% up to quick on a cooldown of 5. Her second skill is weak in constitution A, peerless played A, increases own critical, st um, it replaces weak constitution A with peerless played A, increases own critical star absorption for one turn, Increases on critical damage for one turn and then charges on MP gauge. 1000 to absorption, or yes, it is 1000. 50% up to crit damage and 30% to NP gauge. Third skill is Eye of the Mind False A. Grants self evasion for one turn and creates on critical damage for three turns, 40%. And then her two passive skills are Magic Resistance E and Writing E. Third skill is an Anti Avenger Attack Damage Aptitude. And then her Noble Phantasm is the Mumio Sandenzuki. Of a Dia, the three stage thrust. It's a quick with no rank on the Noble Phantasm. It's an anti unit mystic sword. It hits three times. Deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to one enemy. The damage is um, 12,000 at level one. If you get her to MP level five, it's 2,000. And then she reduces their defense for three turns. At charge level one, it's 30%. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 50%. And that is Okita. And she also has a special outfit as well, which is her in the Shinsengumi outfit. But she, did she really not have like the full? I guess this one kind of counts. But she didn't really have the black pants. I prefer with the black pants on. It is a very nice look. But anyway, that is Okita. Yeah, Okita is a good unit. Um, she ends up being very solid as a single target unit. The only thing that can really be seen as a negative towards her is that she... Uh, and this because she's a little bit old, but if you compare a lot of what she does here with a lot of like newer units, it seems very basic. Um, but for the most part, it's like basic, but good still. Um, <laughs> it's very funny because some units definitely have huge paragraph length size text boxes and you think man that there has to be no way for the, any other unit to compare to them because they just have so much wording on them but then there's some units who have like three sentences and those three sentences are enough <laughs> that makes them very good um and that's what okita got here there's nothing like super fancy that you can look at and be like oh man she's doing like th this bunch of times no she just does a lot of damage and then she hurts and that's perfectly good enough for most units. If you're someone who's a little bit more on the free-to-play side, it is worth noting that I guess if all you care about specifically is being able to do damage, then I guess there is Caesar as a free-to-play option, and then pretty soon we're going to get Santa Karna on the NA side, and Santa Karna 
And even at all his skills at level 1, I was able to do plus plus, uh, 90 plus 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 content in the, so during the summer event. And able to win pretty easily with him. So, it is something to keep in mind of, like, if all you're looking for is for damage reasons, there are other kind of, like, paths to go by. Um, but at the same time, if you want a super powerful saber, um, or a very... <laughs> one that can do a lot of damage, it's so weird to say, like... Doing damage is not enough to be considered powerful, <laughs> but I so I have to watch my words or else someone's gonna leave me a very big comment saying actually you got this all wrong about it. It's not what I'm saying. I'm very tired. Please don't bully me. Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is, is that she's a very powerful unit. She can do a lot of damage, and if that's what you're looking for specifically, and you want it in the flavor of Okita, then that's what you got. You'll get from Okita. There's nothing more than you can look at and then what's on the tin. On the tin, it tells you right here, G1 Okita, do you want a unit that deals damage and is a saber and can deal a lot of it and get crit star stuff and get all this other stuff, then that is, your girl is Okita. And she'll do that for you and you'll be perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to be summoning for Okita because I've always wanted Okita since she came out and most recently I was debating whether or not I wanted to do throw at least one multi for her. And then Quetz I got to uh, Bond ranked up so that kind of like lets me know. I like got her to 11 so I'm like you know what I think that's a sign. I'll give this one multi to Okita see if it works out for me see if it doesn't see if I can get maybe more copies I guess of Summer Okita in which case it just makes mine stronger and gives me more incentive to actually use her and stuff like that. Um, so best of luck for all of us going for Okita. Hopefully I do get her, but I think most likely I'm going to get another unfeatured 4 CE as it goes. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry if it feels a little bit disconnected. I'm very tired and I'm hurting a lot, but I still want to make videos because <laughs> I know there's enough people that are like, like me making videos, so it drives me forward. And you can show that like and appreciation by leaving a comment and leaving a like on the video, I guess, and subscribing. I'll see you guys at a later time. I wish you guys a very uh, good day. I have to let Lucifer in now. He's crying at the door. The cat is. I gotta stop talking now. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Peace.